All right, in this video, I'm going over projection bias, which is a concept in behavioral economics. And the basic idea behind this concept is that when we're predicting our own preferences in the future and our own utility in the future, we tend to overweigh our experience or our perception from today's perspective. So if there's people who tell us something about the future, or something about the way our preferences are likely to change, we don't believe them. We still overweigh our current perspective as we project our utility into the future and think about decision making in the future. So I like to go through a few examples and I'm going to go through a graphical example and then I'll show how does it, how does it appear in models. So I'm, I want to go through a couple of examples. One is when you're thinking forward about getting married and you're projecting your utility a few years into the marriage, how might that be different? So I'm going to show that on a graph and then I'm going to go through a different example of the It Gets Better campaign where people who have been gay for years are telling teenagers it might be really hard now but it gets better. So know that coming out is hard but you will be glad that you came out 10 years from now. It's going to be a really good experience. You don't need to worry about all of the current angst persisting throughout your life. So that'll be the second example I go over. But first, I would like you to think about how you would graph your actual instantaneous utility um, in the years up to getting married and the years after getting married. All right, so this is an exercise that I'd like you to try on your own, even if just in your head, and that is, how does your actual instantaneous utility over time change over this period versus your projected utility from today's vantage point? So um, you're imagining here is the t point in time when you get married. So what would your utility or your happiness be leading up to that day? What would it be in the year after that day, in five years after that day, ten years after that day? And um, in particular, when you're doing this, think about the difference between these two. So actual instantaneous utility, which I'm going to draw in a black line that's straight and not dotted, that's going to be moment by moment if you ask the person two years after marriage, how happy are you today, how, how good is your experience, you want to graph that. It, it's what their utility is in the moment, that's instantaneous utility versus the projected utility, which I'm going to graph in blue as a dotted line. And that's going to be you from today's vantage point thinking that you, you're going to get married in two years. What is your instantaneous or what is your expected utility two years after the marriage from the vantage point of today thinking forward? So think about how those two might differ and and I'm going to draw them now. Oh, and you can start as a baseline from, from the point of zero, which is just sort of your baseline happiness. All right, so what I've drawn shows that people, people do get happier as they approach their marriage. It's, it's an exciting time, an exciting event in their life, but within a couple years, their happiness returns to a little bit above baseline. So people are a little bit happier being married, but they're not nearly as much happier as they think they're going to be. So the projection is this blue dotted line here where people think, people are aware that they're going to be happy as they approach their wedding and their marriage. But they think that happiness level, they know it'll come down a little bit, but they think it'll stay much higher than their baseline. And in fact, it, it returns much closer to their baseline happiness than they would have otherwise expected. And so this is projection bias. It's even though all your friends who are married and all your parents and everyone who have told you that marriage isn't going to solve your problems, it's not going to make you as happy as you think it will, people have told you that this is true but you still have this intuitive sense with your decision making that it's going to make you much, much happier. And that is projection bias. It's mispredicting your future preferences. So the next question is, how does this appear in a model? All right, well, this is a time model. So we're gonna start with a base of a classic discounting time model 
where we have four periods in this model period, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And projection bias is really about mispredicting one of the future utilities. So this is instantaneous utility. It's what you experience in the moment in period 3. Projection bias is going to say you're going to mispredict your utility in that period. So here's one way that you could do this. We're thinking about mispredicting utility in period 3. We're going to come up with a projected utility in period 3. All right, so we've got projected utility in period 3 is going to be some combination of our utility today and our experiences today, our preferences today, and our actual utility in period 3. So let's get through a couple of examples of this. One example is the It Gets Better campaign. So in which case we might think of utility today being the teenager's experience when they first come out as gay. And then utility in period three might be a 20-somethings experience when they've been out for 10 years and they've, uh, their family has come to support it, their friends have come to support it. In which case, they're trying to project how happy will I be in period three and they really should listen to everybody who says it gets better it really does get better all the negative stuff you're experiencing now in high school is not going to persist throughout your life people grow up but it, it's really hard to feel that when you're thinking forward to the future so um, you have some weight alpha that is the bias toward your experience and preferences and perceptions today when you're projecting forward into period three. So um, one minus alpha, so alpha is basically a percent in this case. So it's like you might have a 40% bias um, for your present experiences and perception versus a 60% bias toward, or 60% actual weight towards what you should weight the future as, which is um, the real experience of people who have been out for 10 years and say actually it's much better than you think it is based on your current experience. So you, your utility projected forward is some mixture of what it actually will be in the future and a bias toward the way you think, feel, and what you're experiencing in the moment when we project forward. This is a bias. We're going to use this bias to sort of stick in our utility function for today when we're making decisions. And that's how projection bias works. This is one way of modeling it. It's not the only way of modeling it, but you get a sense. Projection bias has to do with how we think about something that happens in the future, and the bias is that we project today's experiences, perceptions, and preferences into the future more than they really should be. So like a few other examples, when you're in high school you probably had bands that you loved and if you'd asked that high school self how much would you pay for a ticket to that band's concert in 10 years you're gonna say oh I would pay a ton of money for that but then 10 years after you've graduated from high school you ask the same question and maybe that band isn't so so big of a deal to you anymore so you you mispredicted the fact that you would no longer love that band as much as you did in high school and people do tend to think that their preferences will stay the same. They underestimate how much their preferences will change as they grow older. And that's even true even when they interact with older people who say, yeah, your preferences are going to change when you get older. You are going to want to go to bed at 9 p.m. And the, the college student says, no way, I'm always going to want to stay up till, till midnight. And the 35-year-old the self says, nope, you'll want to go to bed at 9 p.m. <laughs> And, and you don't believe them. So that would, be, um, that would be a version of projection bias. So I hope you found this helpful. This is just a, a basic concept in behavioral economics that's really powerful that you see all the time, that we have a really nice way of modeling.